Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Under the Skin. Which is a sentence. Ugh, reminds me of that one bit from Evangelion. Anyways, today we're playing Raccoon City, so let's rock! The next stage is Raccoon City! Be afraid. The city is being infected with some sort of virus that's turned most of the citizens into drooling zombies. And to make matters worse, there's an ultra-powerful and smart bioweapon that goes by the name Nemesis, who will relentlessly chase you down. Panic time in Raccoon City is called Outbreak. During that time, the Nemesis will grow in strength and become an even more powerful foe. Additionally, any random items you have when the outbreak begins will be turned into viruses. Good luck, kid. You'll need it. Now! Go show that Nemesis your stuff if you have the guts. <laughs> this time around, we have to team up with somebody and work to defeat a common foe. So, I hope you're adaptable, Dr. Scott. I know Brad is. Too obscure? Yes? No? I think it might have been, but... Hey, I have to get that stupid movie in there somehow, so... There it is. That's your line for this, LP. Anyways, first thing you're going to want to do in this stage is not be a zombie anymore. I mean, they have like half the walking speed that the humans do, and they don't have any decent weapons. They're also more likely to have random items which, as you've seen from the intro, it gives them a virus as soon as panic time happens. The one thing that I will say about the zombies, and only the zombies, they have unique underwear. Like, everybody else wears the stripy lingerie or boxer shorts. The zombies have, like, red leather lingerie sets covered in kisses and hearts. And... I know it's a standard that you have to overly sexualize women in horror games, don't ask me why, because not only do I not know, I think it is absolutely retarded. I mean, come on, game designers. Although I suppose I can forgive it, because it's hardly a serious effort as a horror title, because I just killed Nemesis with a custard pie. This is just stupid. And I approve. Anyways, I'm in a tank. And one of the best things to do with a tank at least in this level, do not aim at a target, but aim at a wall, or something nearby, and make sure that your target is in the blast zone and is, therefore, collateral damage. You're also completely invincible when you're driving the tank, so, well, as you see, Nemesis can wail on you as much as he likes, he is not going to do any damage. And you know, while we're here, I have to wonder why, why they included a Resident Evil Nemesis stage in this game. I mean, like, yes, it could have been to shill yet another Nemesis remake that was coming out for the GameCube. Because, I mean, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Capcom loves selling you games that you already own. But, thinking about it, there was about a year's gap between the two titles. Like, Nemesis GameCube came out in early 2003, probably February. This game wasn't released until quarter 3, 2004. I think it was like the middle of August, internationally. So, I mean, I can't imagine they'd be that far behind on selling you titles, you know? Although with that said, what was it now, Beautiful Joe 1 and 2 got released in the same month as this game, so, I mean, Capcom could be shilling the idea of slapping characters in games that they really have no business being in. You know, just, just to get used to Beautiful Joe's gameplay. Ah, well. Whatever the reason, we are in Raccoon City, which is one of the most uninspired maps in the game. It's basically just a huge circuit. It's also kind of problematic to me because there are no factions in the level. Like the zombies, they don't fight the humans, the soldiers don't fight Nemesis. It's just everybody against you, your partner, and basically like every other level. And also Nemesis hates you. And I'm gonna take a look around. I have a better idea. I'm just gonna do something. We're going to go and find a specific NPC. There she is. Jill Valentine, everybody! Also, um... Oh, what's it? Carlos is also wandering around the maps. Which is a shame, because there are better characters they could have picked from the Resident Evil canon. 
I would totally take control of Barry Burton if offered. And now I get to dress up as her, which is good because I mean, Jill Valentine, as you've seen, is one of the better characters in the game. Well, this level at least. What other character can boast deadly zombie slaying paparazzi skills? Look at that. By the way, I was recently introduced to the word papped. I don't know about America, but in England, you know, this, this verb's come into play. And it means to have somebody take a picture of you unexpectedly, and it's based off the word paparazzi, obviously. It's not a verb that should exist, you guys. But there it is. So don't use it, America. It's a terrible word, and it sounds like something intimate and sexual and awful. And, well, I mean, you've seen just there why Jill Valentine is one of the best characters in this game. We had one run of items, and we managed to take Nemesis down twice. It's almost a shame that this, like, random guy is gonna steal the glory, because he's, he's got to be nearly done, right? Yeah, especially if I have attack. There we go. And you know what? That is the quickest I have ever completed this stage. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm still going to leave it at this for the video, though. But I'm going to take a cue from this video and hide in a wall pretending to be thermal insulation. So until next time, energy efficiency, uniform temperature distribution, and little pictures of the Pink Panther for some reason. Stuffing!